In the future, people stop aging at 25, but are engineered to live only one more year. Whoa, 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 where's the rest? Never met the quota. My units are up from last week. So is the quota. But when Will finds himself accused of murder, he takes a wealthy hostage and goes on the run. His name is Will Salas. You can't hide 100 years in the ghetto. Seeking to clear his name, Will discovers the real truth about the rules of immortality in the sci-fi thriller, In Time. In Time, we've all just seen it. Brian, why don't you tell us what you thought? All right, so this movie's got some flaws, but I thought it was fun. It's got an intriguing premise. It's thoughtful, it's got some interesting themes going on, and I enjoyed it for the most part. I think this premise is a studio executive's dream. Let's populate a film with people who are not over the age of 25, and let's throw in some science. Let's say that the frontal lobe doesn't mature beyond then, so we can't have them age beyond the age of 25, and they're all in peak physical condition, so they're all gorgeous. It just seems like an excuse to be marketable. I'm a big fan of political science fiction, probably one of my favorite genres. When done well, it can have the audience ask questions. And this movie, yes, you ask questions, but everything was done in such a heavy-handed manner. It's probably a Republican's wet dream, just because of how much we watch this movie and you're like, hmm, look at those liberals and look at look at the ideas that they're pushing forth in this movie. Well, because it's a metaphor. It is a metaphor, yeah. Communism. I mean, that's how what? I was. It's a little vague, but that's what how I read it because did they we talked about the same movie. I, I did not. Yeah, that's they talked about a spreading of time, which is wealth across the classes. It's really about the disappearance of the middle class. This idea that you have the haves and the have-nots, and there's nothing in between. And you have this main character, Will Salas, who who attempts to Robin Hood it up and try to find a way to delineate so that there is a middle class. I don't know what these characters want and what their motivations are. All they do is work for time, but for what and to what end? See, well, my problem is that this movie is all theme and no premise and no story. We get a world that has to be created completely from nothing because we don't know if this is the future. We don't know if this is an alternative reality. But that world is really cool. The idea of time being the new currency. Players are playing Texas Hold'em poker and they're actually playing with their lives. They're not just playing with money. The heavy handedness, the lack of full characterization. Mm -hmm. I kind of glanced over because I was just captivated by the world. You're gonna kill us. Please just let me out. Something that's far more unlikely is the fact that Justin Timberlake would be playing the, this yes. particular role. This is kind of a tough fit for him. I thought he was kind of miscast in this role. But when it comes to this, the real dramatic meat that the film has, it seems like he's mocking. He's mocking the character. There's a scene where he's crying about his mother and it seems like he's just squinting his eyes and hoping that water will come out. But we should also talk about Amanda Seyfried because she's also the person that he's playing off of, which is maybe the reason why the chemistry and his acting wasn't as great. Her character really didn't have much going for her. She's this rich person that we're supposed to get sympathy from, but it's hard to get sympathy from this type of a character. Sylvia. Will Salas. Congratulations, Mr. Salas. You've taken years off my father's life. Which is normally what you do. I think she's capable of being oh, a great actress. Yes, yes. I'm actually a big fan of hers. I liked her in Mamma Mia, mm -hmm. I liked her in Veronica Mars. Through the first half of this film, she was just posing as a Bond girl. Yeah. You would catch her in shots where she literally was doing a photo from a <laughs> Bond poster. And it was a little off-putting. She's just kind of tacked on, it's like, we need a female for him to run around with. We need a love story, let's put that in there just for the sake of putting it in without really spending enough time trying to create some substance with it. I, I thought the style of the film was, was interesting. Yes. Andrew Nichol is, is somebody who really creates interesting world. He wrote and directed Gattaca. He wrote Truman Show, which is a very interesting world. And in time, I thought he did similar work. And, and Roger Deakins did cinematography for this film. He's been nominated for an Oscar nine times. The movie looks really good. I'm amazed that he signed on for this project. I mean, Roger Deakins is so much better than this movie. He is one of the most talented and astounding cinematographers of our time. What's up with the set design? Where is this located? Is this just some back lot in Century City? But see, to me, you don't really have to explain that world because as long as you sort of sell it to me in the present time, as long as you create that truth within the movie, I'll buy it. Celine, we're in screenwriting mm -hmm. classes together, right? Yes. And, and one of the things that they kind of touch on is when you're working on something with suspense, something that you focus on is this idea of the ticking clock, which is this organic way of <laughs> making suspense in a movie. Imagine a movie that is entirely comprised of ticking clocks, that there's constant countdowns, co constant situations where you're just waiting until it turns to zero because somebody will die. 
I'm not into a movie where the whole premise of the movie is a story device. And that's more or less what you're saying. Oh, I'm not saying it's or, a device. That, I'm I mean, just saying it's used in a way that makes a thriller actually thrilling. True, but it's done in such a heavy handed way. Yes, there's time and it's on their arm and it's ticking constantly. I get it. And the henchmen are called Minutemen. Yes, no, indeed. the puns never end. Oh, they they're never lovely. Do. The first shot and the last shot of a film should be instrumental in supporting the themes that the films are going to explore. Mm -hmm. And the first, if not the second shot of the film, is a shot of Justin Timberlake's abs. And I, for me, that says it all. I don't think that's you accurate. You like that? Come on, <laughs> come on. <laughs> so I guess it's time to take our tickets. Avoid it like the plague. Skip it. In Time creates an interesting world that makes you think but fails to make you feel. So I say stream it. In Time, too preposterous and ultimately too many time puns. Skip it. So it looks like our votes add up to one half ticket, which is still a skip it for In Time. I'll cheers to that. All right, cheers, mates. All right.